Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a quick um, unboxing review of a um, deck I've been using for a while now. I use it irregularly, but um, yeah, the last one went down quite nicely, so I thought I'd do another one. So this is Taro Disassembled by Jennifer Cooper Steadley. You can get it from Ferocious Inc. There are some left, I've just been on um, Etsy and there are some left. I wanted the Moon Box, which is the same graphic but on black. Uh, but that's all sold out, so this is the Sun Box. Um, Taro disassembled, so the idea of, of pulling apart a Rider Waite Smith deck into its separate elements and then talking about those. The one I bought actually came with a guidebook as well. I highly recommend the guidebook. Um, I think it's really, really good. Really well done, really interesting way of looking at um, the cards themselves. So when you go to, there is a glossary in here. So for example, here's a really good one. You've got child it tells you where a child appears six of cups ten of cups ten of pentacles six of swords what that means innocence play truth boundless energy generations memories in a child um each card has got uh keywords astrological association planetary association elemental associations then the symbols you know icy mountains what those mean what does the lantern mean this is all for the hermit by the way and then there's down at the bottom here there's a little quick take as well really really good it'd be nice for these ring color but I, I appreciate you know the cost of color print against black and white and i'll go through the cards now as well so the book if you got the book on its own i, I think that's an absolutely fabulous purchase really is useful and it, it just takes you away from the the imagery of the cards makes you think about individual bits on there those cards in the background by the way they're my three cards for today so it'll, it'll do things like, here's a good one, you know, the Queen of Wands, it'll talk about the sunflower, it'll talk about the wand, it'll talk about um, the red banner, it'll talk about the cat, what those things mean. Uh, and again, it just it just fills the story out a bit. So a standard magnetic, magnetic closure on this, keeps the cards nice and safe. And then the cards themselves, quite a thick stock, um, I would say on the thick side of unnecessary, but I'd rather have them too thick than too thin. They do struggle to shuffle quite a bit, so I tend to break them into thirds and give them a really solid shuffle. But they're nice, they're heavy in hand, they're nicely finished, got lovely matte laminate on them. And then the backs are all the same. But the best bit is you've got this really juicy set of colours on the inside. You know, don't get me wrong, they can be difficult to read with. I would not recommend these as a beginner's deck at all. But if you were using the Rider weight and you wanted, you know, bit elements of the fool you know there's a dog in there there's yellow boots why are they yellow what do they mean what does the red feather mean what does the white rose mean and you can just pull those out it just makes you think about the cards a little bit what's in the satchel what's the black rod for very clever um so i'm just going to go through these as normal like i did last time show you each card so we start with the major arcana we've got the fool uh the magician which i've got here at the moment so again a little talk about those two so you're looking at this is the Magician card. She's used the Rider Waite as the jumping off point. So you've got the uh, Lemnisca, the Infinity Symbol, the Ouroboros, the snake eating, eating its own tail, uh, the sword, the wand, the pentacle. Uh, there's a cup, obviously. So all, all the things that are in the card, the, you know, why is there a table? What does that mean? What does this white rod of power double-ended mean? So it's all explained in the book. Really nice. They also look really great when they sit on top of something else. And in a reed, they look really vibrant. They look really juicy. So we'll go to the next card. We've got the High Priestess next. That's the only downside with this. Obviously, when there are people in the card, the person's removed. So you're just looking at the elements. So it does make for quite a cold card. Um, and again, you know, I always think with these kind of unboxings and reviews, it's down to the individual. You either like them or you don't. If it, if it works for you, go for it. And I do think I wouldn't buy this as your first deck. Absolutely not. As a as a backup or a clarifying deck, I think they're amazing. Um, the Empress, the Emperor, the Hierophant, do feel free to pause these if there's any in there, the Chariot, and again I've got the Chariot on the screen at the moment, you know, so there's, there's something to do with, you know, this is a square symbol, this is a symbol of Earth, he's, he's got a laurel wreath on there, um, he's got the Mason's Hammer, that's all very important, the two Sphinxes, the black and white, the water in the background, again, the double-ended rod, uh, the night sky, the stars in there. Um, 
there's, there's lots of elements that you can pull out of this. The city's not on there, is it? That's unusual. There's the, normally there's a city that you're riding out of. Well, there is because it's there, but it's not mentioned on here. And again, the crown with I think there's twelve. Um, there's there's definitely twelve stars or pips or crowns related in here to the signs. Um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting deck. I'm I'm fond of it. I don't use it as much as I should. Uh, that I'll be honest. Uh, every time I get it out, I use the book a lot. I think the book is really helpful. Strength, fantastic card that. The lovers again. There's no people on there, so it's causing you to focus on the, all the all the other bits that you might have missed on there, and it enables you to do a sort of slightly full read when you do a reading. Death card. You, it's got to be black, hasn't it? it? Could not be black. Oh, the hermits dropped into a different position. How did that happen? So we'll try this again. So we go. Oh, they're all moved around. No, no, that was nine. No, it's six. I know what's happened. I've got confused, haven't I? It's my age. Six, seven, eight. And there should be a nine, which there is. There we go. There's the nine. That is the hermit. There's the ten gone then. Hmm. Well, ten should turn up in a bit. Let's just go through. Uh, number t uh, not ten. Eleven, the justice card. See, looking through these now, I'm like, why is there a white slipper on there? I'm going to have to go back in and find out what that white slipper is. Why is there a square on there? Why is there a circle in there? just makes you think the hanged one, uh, they've had to cheat that a little bit and put some person in there because otherwise you're left with very little, aren't you? The death card, it's got to be black, clearly. And then before the devil, we have temperance. You always have temperance before the devil. Uh, another black card, yeah, nice and simple. Quite scary, that black one, I think. And again, the tower's in black as well. And then I did wonder when I got this whether the um, whether the suit would be all the same colour. And I wasn't, I, I didn't really investigate it too much. I thought, I like it, I'm going to buy it. I think it was on Amazon at the time. Uh, star we've gone to, then we've got the moon. The sun, best card in the deck, obviously. Uh, no inner child on there, because again, there's no people on these. Judgment card. You had to put mannequin in for some reason because it, it, yeah, sometimes it's quite important that there's a person in there. It does take the personality out of the cards, I think, and I think that's not a bad thing. So that was the major arcana. Let's go into the minor arcana now. So I'll just break these down a bit so they're easier to hold. Ace of Cups, and again we start off in orange, but it doesn't stay like that. Two of Cups. Changes the colours change all the time. These lovely acid colours. The three of Cups. Four, five, spilt milk card, six, nostalgia and childhood has normally got two children on it. So again, one of those cards that really forces you to think about what else is on the card. Choices, 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 and seven of cups. Only eight. Again, there's a person on there that's looking quite resigned to their fate, not unhappy. And again, there's no there's no happiness on this card. Um, I, don't, it's, I don't think it's a terribly happy card, don't get me wrong, but um, the person on there should look quite stoic and quite, you know, quite happy to move on to the next thing. Nine of Cups, the Abundant Feast card, and then the Ten of Cups. Look at that, joy, celebration, rainbow, happy family home, marriage. Uh, Page of Cups, I think it really, it struggles more with these. I mean, if I ever draw these in this deck, I end up just going back to a book and going, I'm, I'm not really sure. Well, this is trying to tell me a fish jumping out of a cup oh yeah that's curiosity and your, your unconscious kind of coming and, and a surprise like didn't think of that did you um so again they force you to think about the more traditional rider weight knight of cups the queen and the king and then let's go into the next deck so again there's there's literally no kind of rhyme or reason you know if you've got all of these in 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 hand in one go that everyone's a different colour. And again, there's no pattern to this. It's not like it starts off blue and works through 13 colours and comes back around again. No, 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 no. Each colour's been considered really clever. I would also say some, the contrast on some of the cards is quite difficult. So here we've got the grey with the blue. You can hardly read the blue at the bottom there. So I think if you were colour blind, it might not be a, a, an ideal deck. But like I say, I don't buy it for that. I bought it because it challenges me makes me think about the the cards that i'm drawing oh, quick swallow of coffee two of swords that's quite a good card three of swords the four 
the five, six of swords. <laughs> I like that, the, the six of swords sailing away from old wounds. So there's a sticking plaster there. Uh, that's not on the card, by the way. Don't go, don't go looking for a sticking plaster on that. Um, number seven, the seven of swords. Yeah, naughty, naughty. Eight of swords. Yeah, it's okay. I quite like that one. Nine of swords. Again, the person is missing. What's really nice, and you, you don't often see this, is what's important about the Nine of Swords is, is the Nightmare card. And on the Rider Waite deck, on the quilt are all the signs of the Zodiac. And it really simply says everybody feels like this sometimes. So you know when you're having a really bad day and it can feel really sour, that's the problem with that card. You, you feel like it's me and me alone. So you contramundum. It's like it's not you against the world. We've all felt that way. But it's really nice touch just to go, you know, even Libras, even Cancerians, even Leos feel like this. You know, oh, OK, fair enough. It's not just me. No, it's not just you. Ten of Swords. Again, there's no body being impaled in this. So, you know, what's the sunrise? What's the rocks? What's the blessing symbol for? Uh, just just push it out the cards a little bit. I like it. Page of Swords. Again, Page, Knight, Queen and King. Less effective on this because they are driven by the kind of the faces in those cards, I think, and the position of the bodies. Like the, the Knight of Swords is, is very aggressive. He's moving in. He's getting on the Page of Swords. is. Is tense, it's ready to pounce. You don't get that with the card here. You get the, the other bits, you know, so you can talk about that, uh, which is exactly what the, the tarot disassembled was all about. Queen of Swords, again, lots of butterfly motif on there. The two ravens, could they be Odin's ravens flying around the world for news? Uh, King of Swords, yeah, love it, love it, love it. So let's get to the last two, and then I shall release you into the community. Got Ace of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles. The three of pentacles and the four, another table and the four as well. Four of pentacles, or is that a chair? Five of pentacles, uh, another sticking plaster, another woe is me, you know, wounded soldier. Um, six of pentacles, card of imbalance. I'm not sure I agree that the symmetry of the, the card on there. I, I like to I like that card to feel a little bit wonky when you look at it. The seven, hard work and diligence in the eight. Love, love, love the Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, that's good. So there's a snail on there, is there? All right, I'll have to have an investigate on that one. Ten of Pentacles, happy family home. And then we're back into the, the people cards, which, like I say, are the least effective on these. But, but you know, if you draw a page of Pentacles and then you use this to clarify, you've got all this information on there, all these details. And they're explained in the book as well. Uh, the Knight, very static horse. The Queen and the king and then finally i'm just going to walk you through ace of wands the two three of wands your ship's coming in four of wands lovely foundational card that the five of wands yeah niggly six of wands triumph and victory seven of wands mm, that's a harder one to read and the eight of wands quick success lots of movement Nine of Wands, a wounded warrior again. I'm not sure. I, I get why you put sticking plaster on there. I, I, I do understand it, but it's a bit hit you over the head with a big rubber mallet to explain the, the card. The ten, the burden card, having to carry all those sticks around while you harvested them. Uh, page of Wands, and it'll be interesting to see what the bowl hat's about. Uh, the, the mystery of the, the pyramids down there, that's nice. The night the horse is a bit more active. Again, we've got these pyramids every time. The mysterious ones. Uh, the black cat with the queen of wands. So here we go. We've got the queen of wands here. So you could look at this and go, you know, what, what's the relevance of the sunflower? What's the relevance of the black cat? What's the re are they pyramids? Why are we in the desert? Is it dry and acrid? How she got the, the sunflower to grow? Because that's what she does. That's what the queen of wands can do. She can grow a sunflower in a desert. Look at that resilience. Look at that ability. Great, great, great. Love it, love it, love it. I think tarot decks are great for that. You know, find one you like. There's the King of Wands. So, uh, I've been banging on now, what, nearly 15 minutes. I hope you've stuck in there. If you're looking for a, a tarot card deck for someone that's a bit off the walls, but unusual, I highly recommend this one. I think it's a lovely, lovely deck. The book is excellent. Really, really do like the book. You know, Five of Cups, keywords. All, even this stuff down here, I'm not really up to speed on... Some people turn a card and go, ah, Scorpio and Mars. I'm like, I don't know anything about those. 
I'm just I'm just learning about the cups themselves. You know, keywords for the six cups: innocent, joy, childhood, couldn't form with the children. On do you remember? Child represented by small shoes. Got you. This harnesses all the symbolic energy of childlike joy and wonder. Yeah, agreed. Um, wow, there's a lot going on in this, isn't there? Spear, mitten, lyri pipe. What's that? The red hood with a long tail is known as a lyri pipe. Well, there you go. I never knew that. That's something you, I was today. I was this many years old when I found out about that. A popular item of clothing in medieval times. Academic achievement. Mm. So there you go. And then, like I say, quick um, quick takes down at the bottom for this one. Feel free to pause these. Um, so, yeah, apart from it not being in colour, um, I think this is just lovely. Um, and it's, it's well laid out as well. I quite like it when the um, suit cards have the page king, page nine, queen and king at the end. Some people put them separately. I'm not a fan of that. There is even, by the way, there's even a little... Um, there you go, little spreads at the bottom there, sample spreads that you can do. Who, what, where, when. Um, just really, really nice. So highly recommend the book if you could get it. If not, you get the book and the deck from Etsy. Uh, I'm not affiliated to any of this, by the way. It's just one of the decks I use, so I wanted to share it with you. So as ever, have a good one, and I'll see you next time for more of the same. Take care.